Dear Richard, thank you for your interest in the software engineering position at our firm and for the time you devoted to the application process. We regret to inform you that we have chosen to move forward with another candidate for this role. Your skills and background were very impressive and we encourage you to apply to other companies that align with your expertise. We wish you success in your ongoing job search and professional endeavors. Sincerely, any company that rejected you. Do texts like this sound familiar to you? That's probably because your applications are probably not good enough. Employers get tens, if not even hundreds of applications per month for a popular position. So in order for you to even get the chance to get invited to a job interview, your application must be better than 90% of the others. But how can you make sure that it's better? That's what we're going to talk about today. This is actually a very recent topic for myself because I changed my job about two weeks ago and I only had to send exactly one application to get hired by a new firm. But how did I manage to do this and why is it that so many people struggle to find a coding job at all, even after sending tens if not even hundreds of applications to all sorts of companies? The main reason is pretty simple. It's because most of you are not putting enough effort into your applications. Later we're also going to talk about why your CV probably sucks, but I know for a fact that most of you that don't find a job probably use some kind of text template that you just reuse for all the applications you're sending, right? And for each new company you're applying to, you just change the header and you're done. And that right there is the biggest mistake you can make because all of your applications start with the same stuff like, I'm writing to express my interest in the coding job position at your company, blah, blah, blah. No shit. Of course you're writing to express your interest in the position. If your application starts with the most basic text that any HR guy has read over a million times in his career, he's not even gonna bother to look at the rest of your application. So you might ask yourself now, well, how can I apply to 100 companies in three hours then? You don't, that's your mistake. You're gonna take the time to write a personalized application to each company you want to apply to. That also means that you really have to narrow down the companies that you actually want to work for because writing 100 personalized applications will take you quite some time. Your resume just has to look like that it's tailored for this specific job you're applying to. And I'll guarantee you that you not only will get faster replies, but a lot more job interviews. All right, but what exactly is a personalized application? How much effort do you put in and how do you actually personalize it? A personalized or let's call it tailored application is something that you can only send to exactly one company. A tailored application is not a one size fits all approach. It's a strategic effort to connect your skills and qualifications to the company's goals and needs. I would say you should put up to 60 minutes into these individual applications. That includes carefully reading the job description and of course going through the company's website to really understand what exactly they're doing and what you would do if you'd actually get hired by them. Of course, don't spend too much time in trying to make it absolutely perfect because there will never be a guarantee that you'll actually get invited to a job interview. While you're writing this application, you really should keep the following points in mind. Highlight relevant skills. Try to focus on the skills that fit the job description the most and talk about the skills that are directly relevant to what exactly the company is doing and use examples from your past working experience. And try to avoid mentioning too many irrelevant or useless skills that wouldn't benefit the company in any way. Show some enthusiasm. You should express some genuine enthusiasm and really point out why exactly you would be happy or excited to work in this specific company. Unfortunately, you can't say that you only want to do it because you're a huge fan of not being homeless and being able to pay your bills. A nice example about that could be a cool project they have that you might find very interesting or something like that. Be creative about it. Address specific challenges. Companies sometimes mention specific goals or challenges in their job descriptions like upgrading all their projects to the latest version of a programming language, for example. If you know anything about those goals or challenges, make sure to point that out and tell them how your skills could contribute to those goals and make them feel like you're the solution to the problem. Use their language. Companies nowadays have their very own style and working cultures. So if you're applying to a company that is led by young people, you might want to apply some modern lingo in your application, which they'll probably use on their website too. But make sure not to do that if the boss is like 60 plus or something. But finding a good vibe between your communication also demonstrate that you've done your homework and that you would be a good cultural fit. Be specific. The last point is what I've mentioned earlier. Be so specific that you don't put any very generic statements in there that could apply to any other company. Instead, always try to use specific examples and details that showcase your understanding of their needs. Something else that's really important in your application process is to choose the companies you're applying to wisely. If you're a web developer that has experience in JavaScript and PHP, for example, don't just start to apply to companies that only do Python stuff. Try to focus on companies that look for people with your exact skills and qualifications instead of applying to any company with the word software engineer in the job description. I know that people say that if you know any programming language, you can basically work in any coding job, but that's just not right. Sure, you could learn any programming language relatively quick, 
but that's not what they want from you. Because again, you're not a perfect fit and hiring you would come with the extra effort to teach you a whole new programming language, which would delay the one thing they really want from you to make money for them. It's the same thing with the application letter. You have to be tailored for this specific position. Let's think about it for a second and put ourselves in the perspective of an HR guy. This is Tom. He's responsible to find a new web developer for the company Volta. The development team gave him a detailed list of skills the new developer should have in order to add some value to the team. He puts quite a lot of effort into writing a very detailed job description, trying to make it as clear as possible which skills and qualifications are required to work in this specific position. They are looking for a PHP web developer with at least two years of experience. The guy needs to have skills in JavaScript and has to have a deep understanding of SQL databases. He also needs to have experience with PHP Storm, Composer, NPM, GitLab, Docker, PHP Unit, Scrum, and so on. Sounds like a lot of requirements, right? Actually, no, that's pretty normal. Anyways, he publishes the job opening and a couple days go by. A bunch of devs apply to this position and now the time has come for Tom to find some good fits and invite those for a job interview. Some of them start their application letters with the default text mentioned earlier. He doesn't even bother looking at them for too long. Some others have creative text but their programming skills don't really match with the requirements which usually means the applicant would need more time before he starts becoming a productive employee. But there are the other 10% of applicants that seem to be the perfect fit. They have experience with PHP and most of them mention points from the job description. Also, they're pointing out how the company could benefit from the experiences they've collected over the last years working in the same industry. So who's Tom gonna invite to the job interview? Of course, the ones that match the job description the most. He might also invite the one guy that has 20 years of working experience in C-sharp, for example, but only because the knowledge this guy carries around with him could be beneficial for the company. But you get the point. HR people have to judge you by the documents you sent them because that's literally all they know about you. And if they're not 100% convinced that you are that guy for this position, well, someone else is gonna be that guy. All right, let's talk about your CVs. Just to be straightforward with this, if your CV looks like this, you're not getting hired. If your CV has a poor formatting structure and is not easy to read, it's bad. So make sure to use the same headings and fonts consistently to keep a professional appearance. A CV is usually pretty packed with information about yourself, like where you went to school, what your hobbies are, and how much working experience you have. And since you need to fit a lot of information in there, make sure to get rid of all the relevant information. Avoid any spelling and grammatical errors, because even a small spelling mistake can make you look unprofessional and careless. So proofread your CV carefully, and use spell checking tools to make sure that you didn't miss anything. You should also personalize your CV for the company you're applying to. Of course, not as much as the application letter, but make sure that the most relevant points for the company, like a specific skill you might have that is mentioned in the job description, sticks out and is one of the first things you focus on while looking at it. And of course, don't lie. Be honest about your skills and qualifications, because if you actually get invited to the job interview and they ask you about a skill you don't have, well, Good luck in getting that job then. The last thing that could help you get a job is your GitHub profile and your references in general. Having an active and popular GitHub profile in the software development world is kind of like being a rock star. Open source guys just have the highest status when it comes to honorable things for software developers. But if you're like me and don't really like to spend your free time with even more coding like some people do, well then your GitHub profile is probably gonna look similar to mine. But that's all right, we can fix that. Usually the most important stuff on your GitHub profile is not the quantity, but the quality of your projects. Make sure to organize your repositories with the organization features like tags and folders, etc. Having one or two good projects on your profile that showcase your skills and experiences is also very beneficial. But that's a little harder to achieve because if you want to get that, you will have to put quite some time into them. Try to always write informative and useful readme files to tell the reader something about what the project does how to use it and any other important information. Because that can tell the employer how good your documentation skills are, which is also a very important skill. Commit meaningful messages. Working in a professional environment means that you can't commit any super generic messages like fixed or update code, or even worse, any commit messages with any swearing in them. So make sure to always write good and helpful commit messages in your projects, which future employers might see. And the last tip is to hide your old repositories. Every developer still has those old repositories from where you started to learn to code, and they're probably shit, which is fine. And if you still have those around, just make sure to set them on private, because not everybody has to see the bad code that you've pushed many years ago. So these were some tips that helped me to get a job in the industry. If you have anything to add, please let me know down in the comments, and as always, don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit the bell, and I'll see you in the next one.